The thing that stuck with me most about skating, or that it's given me over the years, I think the ability to just go back to something for the sake of loving it. And falling is so integrated into us, a lot of people don't fall as much as we do in every level. And where falling becomes normal. And picking yourself up again is normal. And I think that the kind of resilience that skaters have is uncommon in, call it regular life. You know, as I've gotten older and my body got kind of torn up for a long time, I started to channel some of that energy into academic things. And for unimportant reasons, I ended up TED Talks, and Pop Tech, and Foo Camp, and all these small groups of highly charged intellectuals. I went there and I was thinking about just what you're talking about. I want to share what skating is, how special our community is, because we feel like outsiders, and we all find this mutual sense of belonging in shaping a community by what we do. And what we do is we individuate ourselves, we separate ourselves, and then share it back. And so what have I taken from skateboarding is, look, I won a bunch of contests, and I, I traveled, and I had all the good things that you could ever hope to have happened. That stuff comes, and it goes. But the thing that lasts is a thing that keeps growing. It's alive. And that's what the community is doing. And that's something that I have. And it comes from an ethos of sharing and feeling connected with people through what you do. And that is something I take. And that's not something that's often taught. And so that's one of the things that I have loved sharing to the outside, call it the outside world, people that don't look at skateboarding in the way we do, right? And that's been like a joy for me. And it keeps me on my toes because I'm thinking, okay, how do I talk to them? In a way that shows the beauty of what we have. When I shared that to that community, and again, it is a gnarly community. And I go afterwards, and I had an MIT professor coming up to me. MIT professor. Oh, I, I wish we could teach that. It potentially the greatest academic institution in the world. A Yale Law professor. I'm going to show that in our class because we need this characteristic, what skaters have. A research doctor came to me. So he was a doctor and a scientist. Okay, combined, like a double PhD guy. In the hardest things you can imagine. And he goes, you know, 99% of scientific researchers, from my perspective, I'm talking to the guy, they're not that good. Because there's only that, that 1% that it takes a quality to reach into the unknown and to do what's not safe or guaranteed. This is what you guys do all the time. It comes from getting up. I wish we could teach that. I wish skaters would become scientists because then we would have more great scientists. All of these qualities, all of them I take from skating. That is the godfather of street skating, Rodney Mullen, talking about how he learned so much, you know, so much of his personality, so much of everything he knows comes from and stems from skateboarding. Yeah, and uh, that came from actually uh, The Beautiful Mind. It's a video there on the barracks, um, ran by Steve Barra and Eric Costin. Great uh, website for skaters, one of the best ones for skateboarding. Yeah, and the reason we wanted to really put that at the forefront of the podcast is because that's something that's very near and dear to our heart. It's dear to his heart as well as it, you know, it definitely comes through there um, in his expression. And, you know, we couldn't have said it better. You know, he is talking about what skateboarding has given him as a, as a person and how getting used to falling down is something that we have the pleasure of getting. 
you know, that's, that's a life experience that sharpens us as people. And most, you know, ordinary people don't get to experience that. They don't get to fall down as often. So they don't get to pick themselves up as often. Yeah, that whole falling down or getting pushed down, I feel kind of falls in the same category, you know, with skateboarding. <clears throat> with challenging myself, what it's giving me is just challenging me to pursue something like uh, that eventually getting better because you can't start any kind of trick without an ollie. So learning that craft, you have to start the ollie and then, you know, a 180, a front side 180, a back, you know, all these little pieces become this beautiful puzzle that is created after you know of all the pieces are put together yeah and you learn those fundamentals and it it's a tremendous advantage you know uh whenever he's talking about how he went to this other world of you know rodney mullen whenever he's talking about how he goes to these you know tech conventions or intellectual conventions basically ted talks some of the smartest people in the world and that's just that right? he gets to share that right he gets to say this is what i have this is what our community has and you know here here it is here's the beauty of it well not even that i mean that yeah <clears throat> i i he's amazed by the people he's around just because they're intelligent, you know, they come from prestige schools, they teach and stuff like that. And this is a skater on in the same court as them because he has that type of genius with this skateboarding. And I think a lot of skaters have that because sometimes they feel like, oh, look at them skaters down the street or they think something dumb. It's like, man, these this is what makes us who we are. And in our mind, we have so many calculations, so many different uh, mathematical equations we're putting together just to do a simple, you know, kick flip, you know, trick yeah. or, you know, down a rail, down a hand stair rail that's 15 stairs or something like that. I mean, the, the things that it gives you, the attributes, you know, to your creativity, the attributes to you being an individual, you know, compared to like team sports or something like that, where you kind of like have to fall in place and creativity isn't embraced really in those settings you know you can only follow these certain set of rules that's one of the reasons i really love those nike ads that are coming out right now like with you know stefan and p rod and all them like it it really highlights the difference and the beauty of skateboarding you know compared to anything else and i and i am really excited and just it's my pleasure and i know i don't know if this is going to go out to a lot of skaters, but that's our whole goal. But it's a way for us to channel our creativity and actually make something of ourselves. You know, guys, uh, you know, this podcast has been given to us by other people that have pursued their passion um, and they have their creativity. But being able to channel that and profit and make a life out of it, I think that's going to help. That's what this podcast is here for. Yeah. And of course, you know, it's going to be free and we want it to be just another tool just like skateboarding has been for us it's been a tool to learn it's been a tool to look at life differently and to look at people differently you know to be able to have a, a certain understanding and so our goal with this podcast is to be able to talk to people that have had a similar experience or even a different experience but all through that same lens of this is what skateboarding has given me. This is what skateboarding has taught me. And it would be, you know, a tremendous pleasure for me to be able to say that we helped someone achieve something that they didn't think that they could do because they, you know, in, in their head, they just thought they were, you know, just, just a skateboarder. Right. But, but in fact, skateboarding is equipping them for these challenges and they don't even know it. So by hearing these stories, by hearing the different experiences from people that have said, hey, this is what I did with it. Um, I just think that if we could do that, I mean, just for us in general, it would help us tremendously with this business we've started. And I think it would help anyone listening uh, and 
inspire them, hopefully, to start a project, to start a company. And so when you're listening to this podcast, we really want you guys to, we are picking the guests that we put on for reasons um, to really kind of touch uh, everybody that had an influence from skateboarding. So you'll see professional skateboarders on the show. You'll hear, excuse me, uh, professional skateboarders on the show that have their own companies, how they started, um, what they've been doing. Um, then you're going to hear entrepreneurs on the show that used to skate as a kid, but other passions and stuff like that took them to other bigger things. But they always come back to skateboarding, and it was real funny. You'll hear on some of our guests when we talk to them, we knew their career was totally different than ours, but we had something in common, and when we talked a little bit more, we found it was skateboarding. Yeah, and simply be because we had the idea of starting this podcast and we knew what it was going to be about, we asked complete strangers, hey, let me ask you a weird question. Did you ever skateboard as a kid? Did you ever think about it? And we were really surprised with the answers that we got. I yes. mean, more often than not, they said, yeah, actually. Yeah. And then when we followed up with, did you learn anything from it? And when they said, yeah, absolutely, I learned this, I learned that, it taught me this, I wouldn't have been able to do this without it. We knew that we were on the right track and we knew that we weren't alone because we felt so strongly that skateboarding has given us so much and to be able to talk to other people that say, yes, I agree with you and here's what it did for me, it, it would be a tremendous help for us and so that's the main reason for doing this. And the beauty of it is skateboarding, you know, it doesn't have any barriers. It don't matter if you're white, black, Chinese, whatever. You're a dope skater. Everyone's going to give you mad props no matter where you're from. So we want to make sure we touch everybody out there. Yeah. And, and even if you're, you know, really good at something else, maybe you're, you're great at putting together videos. Maybe you're great at designing, writing, music. We feel like it all comes back to what we learn from skateboarding. And so that's the, that's the goal here. And so, guys, anytime you're listening, you guys have questions. You guys always hit us up on Twitter. That's at skate underscore two underscore create. I'm sorry about the, uh, the hashtag, or excuse me, about the name there, but some other kid that hasn't posted <laughs> since 2012 <laughs> has the skate to create. So uh, if you guys know him, get at him, tell him we need it. But uh, the podcast is going to be fun. This is our first time, Verse Venture. Uh, we're doing it as a team. Um, it's an organic idea that came from a group of friends sitting around the table talking about it, and we heard about a podcast, just not talking about podcasting, but just talking about different life experiences, stories, you know, um, just talking around the circle. Yeah, and this is a good opportunity to do the same thing, but again, with people that we really look up to, people that we feel we can benefit from hearing about their experiences. All right, so let's get into actually the reason we wanted to start this podcast. You know, for a few years, I worked as a manager for a skate shop, local skate shop here in Texas, uh, fast forward first and then moved on to Zoomies later on. And I would always talk to kids and I would talk to parents, you know, grandparents that would come into the store and they would ask, you know, why their kid should skate. Basically, I would, you know, I had to try and sell them on the product or whatever. So I had plenty of reasons as to why I attribute a lot of my personality to skateboarding, you know. How long were you with uh, Fast Forward? I was actually there for a few years. I Well, fast forward a couple years, and then I left to go play music. Okay. Uh, and then, and then you got uh, joined up, up with, with Zoomies, Zoomies later. Yeah, yeah. And then did you just go in directly as a manager with Zoomies? Because you were a manager at the store. Did you work your way up, or how did that work? Well, yeah, I started as, as an assistant manager. As an assistant? And then okay. in, I got hired on as a store manager later. So the two stores, the Fast Forward and then Zoomies, uh, there, was there a big difference in how they operated, or I mean, did you did you like one store better than the other? No, nah, there was. They both had their own different vibes, but Zoomies obviously had more stores. There was it was a bigger 
company. So whenever that happened, there was like a lot more people involved. You got to travel to a bunch of different stores and stuff. Um, and they took over the fast forward shops. So it wasn't too much of a transition because we were in the same spot, you know, but the conversations were the same. You know, we had a lot of the same conversations with people because we were still the only shop in town, you know, kind of like the biggest shop in town anyway. Well, I knew that you guys went, uh, or they, they flew you out to different locations when you used to tell me, Oh, I'm going to this, what, Colorado? You went to Colorado, uh, where, Seattle, right? Yeah. Colorado, Seattle had 100K, which was like a huge celebration with all the pros and yeah. a bunch of the store managers that actually, sold a hundred thousand dollars in the course of the year so they qualified to get to go on that trip so it was actual contests that the skate shop held for all the top managers and they collabed it with all the top pros in skateboarding companies, yeah yeah so with all the top reps in the companies all the different shops that they represent at the zoomy skate shop um so i'm sure that when that event it was phenomenal tell us about that experience what like what happened awesome. there Who'd you, who'd you be? Drank a lot. Yeah. Jaron Wilson, Mikey Taylor. I mean, a bunch of, a bunch of my favorite pros. And it was actually really cool because they were just all down to hang out and, you know, party, take pictures with people. And it was awesome. Like it, it was a really cool experience, uh, working for those companies actually. And, you know, not to mention all the cool people that I met too. And all the cool conversations I got to have because there was a lot of, opportunities to represent skateboarding and yeah. you know basically pull people on board because i found myself talking about it all the time i got to skate all the time it was it was really cool yeah well when you're putting yourself around something like that of course i mean that's what you know that's what we love to do it just takes you back to the old days when we used to hang out with the boys uh skating on those high curbs out there in fullerton yeah that's right So let's get into why we actually wanted to start this podcast. I mean, working as a skate store manager um, for Fast Forward for a while and then for Zoomies, I would run into people all the time, you know, parents, grandparents, people that were buying stuff for their kid, you know, for uh, they're buying like their complete or they're buying clothes or whatever. And they would come in and they would, you know, stand by the counter in the back and ask a whole bunch of questions as far as like just skateboarding. And it was up to me. I felt like the ambassador, like I had to basically tell them why their kid needed to skate, you know, not only to, to be able to sell them, you know, the skateboard that I think their kid definitely wanted, but also because I knew it was going to be good for their kid. You know, I thought that skateboarding does something to your brain. It does something to your will your motivation and your like your just whole character you know what do you think so with you saying that let me ask you this what was one of the first lessons in skateboarding that i guess taught you dude you know like i remember whenever we first started skating and i was trying to learn how to ollie for the first time i had to put it on the grass of course and then try to just try over and over and over again to get that stupid board off the ground you know like (laughs) i think it was the turf on grandma's uh back porch it was and then i you know it took me a lot a long time man like way longer than it should have but that taught me that if you really try something that you want to do and you really want it you just got to keep going for it and you got to keep trying it you can't try and then you know, give up because, you know, if you tried it 20 times and it was going to be on that 23rd time that you were actually going to do it, you would have never known until you got to that 23rd time. So if you just keep trying to get it off the ground, you know, eventually you will. And you know what I think about it now, when I asked that question, I was asking it to myself as well. And I was like, man, I think I took advantage of getting good at it really quick. I mean, because I, I was just learned a trick. I would learn what, in a day or two on how to get it flipped and then going with a little bit of speed. Yeah, you would watch the videos and in I would slow just, motion like, all the like, time. Yeah, I really meditate on the videos. And I just took for granted for getting good like that and just kind of this, oh, you know, I'll be good at it. 
But man, if I stuck with it, you know, you on, on the last show, you asked me if I ever thought about going pro. And when I think about it, it's like, man, if I just stuck with it because I got really good at it, man, I probably could be. And I, I knew that that atmosphere, the type of people that were around. And that's I mean, that was the scene I wanted to be in. Right. But, you know, we moved to Texas. We moved to a different part of the area where we couldn't really rely on a whole lot. We had our family that moved here before us, but you know, whenever we came down and we had to get jobs. So yeah, I mean, we had to provide for ourselves, and it really took that out of us. So coming back around where we're at now, let me ask you this, uh, with skating, you having that will not to give up, what was something that you put to mind to not give up of what actually makes you, you that creativeness that you have. So what was something that you created based off that, that, that is pretty much what we're doing now. I mean, yeah. I mean, starting a company whenever it came down to what type of company it was going to be. I didn't know. I just knew that I wanted to work for myself because I, well, I, I could, you know, I don't know if I agree with that because it was something that you always created with your hands. So it was either drawing something, um, painting something. Yeah, but now it's websites, now it's video, right. now it's other things that I had no idea that I was going to be doing. And it started with murals and it started with, you know, painting on people's garage walls or whatever. Right, right. You know, uh, shout out to Lucas. But yeah, so it starts with that, but I had no idea what it was going to end up being. And that's okay because I knew that if I would have just kept trying to do it and not really saying no, I couldn't do something, you know, just really give it a good effort. Uh, something good was going to come out of it, you know. But that's though, exactly what happened. Yeah, I had some crooked ollies in the beginning, but <laughs> eventually it got better, you know. But well, those ollies still, still are pretty horrible. <laughs> yeah, but that's why I wanted to start the podcast. I'm not trying to focus on, you know, teaching kids how to ollie. I want to really inspire them to move forward in other things, you know, and take skateboarding as an example of, of like, wow, this, this is actually training, like. You know, I can I can learn something from this and then actually take it to other steps in my life. But it's that everyday work ethic, work at it, what whatever it is, is that step every day that you put forward to 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 create that or to get that understanding that you're going to hit those times where you fall. You learn. OK. It hurt because, <laughs> man, when you're skateboarding, you're trying to learn a trick. I mean, it could be days. It could be a week. Until you land that trick, and once you've landed it, you just remember, man, I took a lot of beating for that one trick. Dude, I sprained my ankles, like, constantly. All and the time. then there, you know, that takes you out for weeks and or, or months, and then you're just thinking about what's going to happen when you get back. And, uh, you know, when it, bringing it back around to the actual podcast, there was a few attempts, you know? Like, we yeah. we started talking about it, a long time ago and then eventually you know after many attempts of trying to actually get a podcast together we didn't really know what we wanted to do we just knew that we wanted to to do a podcast and it was something we we're all interested in you know travis included you know so yeah because i'm sorry to cut you off it was uh I think we were going to call it the round table. Uh, yeah, something like that. Like it, that, like that wasn't already done like a thousand times. Like it wasn't a hundred round tables already. Right. But what it was is because we always, every time we had our little group session, because we always came together and we talked about, you know, either things that you're creating, um, some, some event that a show we had thrown. Yeah. Uh, some party we threw or, I, I mean, it was always around that. And that's just the creativity that, we had and just that pursuit of just keeping going so where we're at now we're able to kind of just reflect back on that and especially if you in that age because i remember what when we were 23 24 to 27 i mean those days were just all about partying and just figuring out what the heck we were going to do yeah you know sleeping on couches and you know a bunch of our friends just hooking us up with a spot to crash or whatever. And there wasn't, I mean, I was fine with that because I was playing music, you know, right. I wasn't, you guys were doing the band. Yeah. So I was, I was 
expecting that kind of lifestyle. And whenever it actually came down to it and, you know, when you don't have a place to even crash, it sucks. But good thing that we had uh, good friends and everyone was helping us out. So we never really hit that rock bottom. But, but like, wouldn't you, wouldn't you consider those times right there as education on how to handle life when something happens? I mean, I, I, I take those moments. I take those moments when I feel like at my lowest points trying to really in- understand the moment, the feeling that I'm in and knowing like, okay, this is just a moment in time that there's something more, but I have to just embrace what's going on. And, you know, did I put myself here? You know, you know what I think of, I think of like going to the principal's office. I remember like we got in trouble for like having pencil fights or something. We had to go to the pencil. Stealing pencils from the library. (laughs) Taking pencils from the library. That's what it was. They had like those fat pencils back when pencil fighting was a thing. And so, we're sitting there in the principal's office and I just remember this feeling in my stomach, like, dang, like this is the worst. I'm in the worst possible position I've ever been in. And then thinking about that, whenever you like get into some real trouble, you just reflect on that. You're just like, whoa, that was not the end. I I had it in my mind as this huge thing that I was never going to get through. And here I am, you know, onto the next thing. So I think about that and I just think like, okay, this is a passing moment. This is something that I'm going to get through. And it's all about just figuring out how. The way I I, I like, I'm thinking of it is, so say you're trying to land a trick. Remember how when you were trying to land a kickflip, it took you so long, (laughs) right? It took, it literally took him so long to land a kickflip. But once he landed it, he forgot about it. He forgot about all those attempts. He forgot about all that stuff. He just relished in that moment. So a lot of the times when we're going through a lot of those hard heartaches and those moments where we feel defeated, that one time of success or that one accomplishment, or that one time you feel like, man, I did it. I landed it. You, f- you forget about it, but it was all education and all what makes you you now. Yeah. And you know what? I actually get that feeling a lot now whenever I get to help someone with a few things. Like, I'll, you know, there was this kid that was at the shop one day. Um, this kid that was a real, just right off the bat, super cool. His name was Esteban. He like, he just came in and instantly was, uh, super humble and just really ready to learn whatever, you know, uh, he could cause he just started skating. So. Uh, it was a real pleasure to help him out with learning, you know, how to put a board together, for example, or how to grip it or whatever. And, you know, his parents were really grateful. And I know that he was grateful, too, because he, you know, he would come in after that all the time and want to just hang out at the spot and, you know, always just uh, be down for, for going to skate with us. And uh, he just really was into it. And I felt like, that was a really cool way to give back was just selling him a board and kind of convincing him to get that instead of whatever the other thing was probably a scooter or something. (laughs) Yeah. Well, let's, so now like where, where we're at right now, we have this company Royal Decca. I mean, it was, again, it was something that James had started, you know, several years ago. We didn't really have it all together. And now, what we've done to put these pieces together, it's put us in a position to be right here in front. Or, I mean, to have these microphones, to have this opportunity to even be trying to create this podcast, having the people around us that we've met in this past 30 days has been worth all those heartaches, all those moments of feeling lost, not worthy of anything it it's been remarkable i mean yeah it's been incredible and we've actually had so many people help us along the way you know uh joel at the the meetup uh mitch at the meetup gary you know everyone that really encouraged us to move forward with the podcast and you know of course travis we couldn't do without him like bringing him along like there's no way we could have even 
it, begun it, it, to even try to do this without it was funny. all those pieces. Absolutely. It was so funny. Like we had that idea of the podcast, you know, we went to a couple of the meetups, but it was nothing like when we went to that one last one that we went to and Joel, uh, Joel was there and Dr. Pi and uh, the way he conducted it, it was it was such a classroom setting to where he was a teacher and just asking questions, or we were asking questions. He was just giving us the answers to it. Yeah, I couldn't help it. We were just had we just had to sit there and we were like hanging on every word because he was genuinely trying to help, like from that, a, from a place that, of like, yeah. I'm not here to set my own agenda. It's just I'm here to help whatever you need, you know, with whatever you need. So. That came through loud and clear. Very much so. And I, I, man, to kind of touch on that, I mean, that's how I feel every time we come in this podcast movement that we just went to, um, just with the people around it. I feel that love. But once we left that night, we, I mean, it was hands down. We said, we're doing it. We're going to put it out. We're going to set that date, put that date on paper, put that date out there to where we got to show that we're doing it. And, here we are this is our second episode you know and we it doesn't look like anything now but i mean gosh it's it's amazing i mean so proud of uh myself my brother travis for all of us even though we're all different people and we have different thoughts and they conflict sometimes but we're still working together because we all have that same goal same purpose yeah and that is because we want to help people you know we want to help people you know, that might not be dealt the best hand, you know, maybe they came up in a spot where they didn't have, uh, you know, a place to go, or they didn't have someone that helped them out. You know, we want to offer that free advice of from somewhere that, you know, we've been there before, you know, we can, we can actually relate to someone that's been homeless or someone that's been in a, in a place where they really know where their next meal was going to come from or whatever. Yeah, in a real bad situation. Yeah, like, like, Top ramen, you know, weekends or Absolutely. weeks or whatever. Absolutely. But I mean, it's, it's the grind. It's the hustle. And now, you know, that we have that, um, it's been a journey. Like I, like I said. So, um, another thing I kind of want to touch on is the, the people that helped us take the first steps in your business. So who, who was somebody, who were the people that helped get Royal Decca launched? Uh, well, first off, it was, you know, you, Lucas, that helped me flesh out a lot of the ideas. You know, I, I was basically like abusing your guys' ears, talking about what I wanted to do. And you guys definitely encouraged me in that way. And then, you know, a lot of the times Nick, uh, our cousin would, uh, I mean, he, it was a lot of it was his idea in the right. first place. And he was just kind of bringing me on as the artist. And then I, eventually I took over kind of because I felt like, uh, you know, I could do it. And he had to kind of step down to be able to take care of some other stuff. Well, yeah, because at that time, you know, you guys were in the band. Uh, you were doing things um, for the band. You were the lead uh, guitar. And then uh, Richie helped out. No way. I was just playing guitar. It was punk music. There was really no lead guitar, but well, you, yeah. So we, anything we do, we lead in it. So you were lead guitar, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, no, but with the, <clears throat> with the different parties and things we set up, it was like a business. Cause we had that legit. We had the flyers set out several weeks in advance, getting people excited for it, building anticipation, uh, myself and my cousin Nick, I mean, true hustlers at heart, just, you know, out there. Yeah, Richie, you Richie know. Richie is he, a huge part of it. Yeah, Richie Salazar, he basically designed so many of the flyers when we were first starting out. And he was, you know, working nights over at 24 Hour Fitness. He, <laughs> yeah, I remember he was, getting yeah, that job. Was, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was supposed to be working and instead he's like photocopying different flyers and stuff. Yeah. This we were using. Thank you. 24 hour fitness. Yeah. They supplied all of our, <laughs> all of our all flyer our flyers. paper and ink. But for a yeah, while. but you know, he, he basically helped me start promoting the band, start marketing us. You and I would go out along with a few other people and do just straight up guerrilla marketing in the malls. Right. 
passing all the flyers out. We had a ton of people at the shows and we got a lot of practice with it. So now whenever it comes to promoting myself, promoting the company, it's like second nature. I mean, we, you know, it, it basically comes out and with this new medium of podcasting, it just seems like it could be even easier. You know, everyone should have their own podcast. If if you're Absolutely. thinking about starting one, Absolutely. just let us know what kind of help you might need. And we'll definitely do what we can to, to help you start one because it, it really is a movement. There was like what, 700 people at the last convention just here in Dallas from all over the world. And, it's just a beautiful thing. It's awesome to be, be a part of it. Yeah. And then we got to volunteer, all three of us at the Royal Deca crew. And it was an absolute pleasure. Um, and it, again, we can't thank the guys enough. Uh, Dan Frank, uh, Mitch and Gary Leland and Jared as well. Well, Mitch Todd and then Mitch Gary Todd. Leland. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so. So with that being said, um, here's our show, you know, and uh, just expect to hear a lot more interesting people from skateboarding, from uh, music, musicians, uh, different artists, um, entrepreneurs themselves. Uh, we want to bring you different ideas because we know that you're listening to the show right now and thinking about how can I benefit from this show and so we're going to give you a lot of different tools for that to have you get that creative bug going and get that wheel turning. Yeah, and hopefully get some inspiration to get out there and make something. So, you know, the best thing we can say is to keep skating and we'll see you next time.